Tonight, the undefeated TCU Horn Frogs play host to the UC Irvine Anteaters out of the Big West Conference here in Fort Worth, Texas tonight at Show My Arena. And a good evening and welcome in Brian Estridge along with Colin Boniker. Ready to bring you all the action of this one. Well, you can see as these games progress for Jamie Dixon's team, the competition level increases. Yeah, absolutely. Anteaters are coming off a 31-6 and six season last year. They won an NCAA tournament game against K-State, lost in the second round to Oregon, but they got three guys back from that team, and they're still playing great defense and rebounding the ball at a high clip. Yeah, they average 13 more rebounds than their opponent. This is a team, by the way, one of the deeper teams that the Horned Frogs will play with some terrific big men that can score the basketball for them. Let's take a look at one of those right now. This guy has been impressive already. He's a guard, though, for him that can take it inside. Yeah, Yasu Werku is a former high school McDonald's All-American, leads the Anteaters in points, assists, and minutes this year, and scored a career-high 26 against Pepperdine. They'll need another big effort from the three-year starter if they want to hang with the Horn Frogs tonight. Yeah, he can handle things on the perimeter as those big men step out and shoot it as well. Now for the Horn Frogs, you talk big men, you talk Kevin Samuel. He's almost an automatic double-double. Yeah, the big fellow in the middle has come off a career-high 19 points last time out against Air Force and has recorded a double-double in every game this year on the season. But he can have such a decided height advantage tonight against UC Irvine. So we'll have to see if he can keep up the great uh, start to the young season. It has been a good start for the big fella, Kevin Samuel, the sophomore out of Barbuda. They take on the tough Anteaters out of UC Irvine, as Colin mentioned, 31 game winner last year. Look into the starting lineups and the opening tip off for the 3 0 Horn Frogs and the Irvine Anteaters next. TCU, lead on. Show my arena the side of this one tonight. The Horn Frogs and the UC Irvine and Eaters. Frogs coming at three and zero on the season. And Eaters are three and two. They played a tough early season schedule. There's a two head coaches, Jamie Dixon, in his fourth year here at his alma mater. Russell Turner's in his tenth at UC Irvine. He's turned that into one of the better jobs in the Big West. Yeah, absolutely. He's getting great players to come yep. there. McDonald's All American and uh, Yasu uh, Worku. And obviously, it's uh, coming to uh, a head there when they win an NCAA tournament game last year. Yeah, six postseason appearances for Irvine under the head coach, Russell Turner. He's got a pro background as well. Spent some time down in San Antonio. Ready for the start of this one here at Schollmeyer Arena. Frogs and the UC Irvine Anteaters. Tommy Rutherford's going to jump center for the Anteaters. He wears number 42, 6'8", senior out of El Cajon. California. Kevin Samuel jumps for the Horn Frogs. Big time officiating crew, by the way. And this tap is controlled by the Frogs, and they'll work with the basketball first. Gary Maxwell, Pat Driscoll, Darren George. Three excellent officials here early in the season for this non conference matchup. And look for the Frogs to try to get Desmond Bain going here early, coming off a cold shooting night last time out against Air Force. It was only 2 of 11 from the floor in that game. And, and Jamie said he thought he had decent looks at it, just one of those nights. Yeah, it was one of those guys. He had a couple of shots that rimmed out that normally go down for him. Just like that one there, but uh, you got the rebound for the big fella. He was able to haul it in. Kevin Samuel for TCU. It's RJ yeah. Nimhard coming off a pair of well, really the best back-to-back -back games of his career as the three ball goes for Greer. Yeah, Greer's been a nice surprise so far. The transfer uh, coming in, he's eight or for 13 coming into the game from three. There's a, his ninth on the season. Frogs with the early lead here on their opening possession. Work who works at baseline down low. Rutherford can't handle it on the lay-in, and the rebound back the other way comes TCU. And the Anteaters hold their opponents at 38% shooting. They're really tough on defense. Frogs are going to have to knock down shots here tonight. Yeah, one of the reasons is big Brad Green on the inside wears number 55 there. He takes up a lot of space. Farabello misses on the long-range jumper and a rebound here. And the push right now for Workhoop. That was a really good pass to get him set up, and he had a wide-open look at it. They'll take that shot all day long. Big screen from Green. Workhoop keeps to the baseline. Green tips it to keep it alive. That's going to off his hands, and it'll be TCU's basketball. That was a pretty nifty move there by Werku. He kind of pushed that ball a little farther ahead than normal, like keeping a dribble close to your body. He almost pushed it farther ahead to where he, then he could go run to it. Yep. Otherwise, it might have get uh, deflected out of there. 90 seconds into this first half. Frogs with the early lead. Grayer now Bain again. Bain has had a couple of touches offensively. Farabello works his way in. And yeah, there's Green to clear the glass for 
Irvine. Yeah, you like Parabello being aggressive going to the basket, but you want to get a little bit more under control shot going up on the on the layup there. Rutherford down low, and this is on the turnaround with the left hand. Nice run out here to find a big fella, Samuel, who is fouled. Rutherford that, trying to get it. That's a really tough catch from Kevin Samuel, too. Running, the big guy running right down the pipe, right down the middle of the floor. Lob pass over the top, and Rutherford's chasing him just over his over his fingertips there. And is able to, here's a long pass, just over the outstretched hands. A nice catch and turn. Here, here's the one thing that I think Kevin Samuel does really well, and you and I have talked about this over the years as he misses the free throw is when Kevin Samuel gets the ball up high, he keeps it there. Yeah, he's not one of these guys that's going to catch it and start trying to back somebody down, pounding the ball into the right. ground. He gets it, keeps it high, and tries to get it up on the rim. That's good coaching because, you, you know, you hear that even as a youth. Hey, keep the ball high, but too many times her initial reaction is to catch it, put it on the floor, try to reset, and he doesn't do that. Yeah, especially since as, you know, him growing up, he faced the basket yes. growing up. Here's so it's th even harder for him to learn to do that as Desmond Bain knocks down the three. Yeah, that's a good sign for TCU. Bain off the two misses for Samuel. And the Frogs with an early 6 0 lead. Yeah, and Desmond's not going to hesitate on the shot. He's going to keep shooting. Artest is with it out front. That's Jerron Artest. He's a freshman. And yes, he is the son of Meta World Peace, formerly known as Ron Artest. Here's a foul on TCU in the penetration. And this one is going to be whistled on RJ Nimhard. Substitutions. Rutherford's going to get back in the line. They'll play four big men, kind of rotate them out. Colin Phelps is going to check out. Six night sophomore out of Seattle. Well, you can see it's worked for him. Yep. It's such a huge rebounding advantage through five games, too. It's not just a small sample size. You're getting into a sixth of your season already. Yep. Plus 13 in rebounds for TCU. PJ Fuller and off the bench comes in for RJ Nimhart. Catch and shoot. Baseline for John Edgar, senior out of Chino Hills. Knocks it in and the and eaters are on the board. Yeah, when you're coming off a screen like that and you know you're going to get the ball and it's going to be an automatic rise up and shoot, It's a, sometimes you have a little more confidence in that stroke. Let's take another, if we could take another look at this. This is a huge screen. Farabello runs into our test. And I tell you, I'm not sure if he was trying to set a screen there or if this was just a miscommunication. I want to give you a quick look at it, Colin. Check this out. Boom. Yeah, that's that's a dribble handoff. So once you get rid of the ball, the defender is still trying to guard the person you're handing the ball off to. So that ends up being a moving screen for Farabella. He's got to know to avoid that defender altogether or come to a complete stop. Yeah, he, he took the blow that time from Artest down low and a travel. Try to get it to Rutherford. Shuffles his feet, does a big fella, gives it right back to TC. You know, Ruther Rutherford's... Uh, he, he traveled and turned the ball over there, but he that's going to be quite a battle I want to keep an eye on tonight. Grayer's really tough on the post defense down there. They're going to be getting after each other pretty good. Rutherford's a guy who has had some success in the Big West. He was an all-Big West performer as a sophomore. Last year was an honorable mention member of that team. Here's Bain on the feed down low. And Desmond tried to lead Kevin Samuel to the rim that time. Kevin hadn't quite planted his foot to take a step to the basket and just, just out of his reach, goes out of bounds. Turnover there for TCU. Bronx with a couple of turnovers here early on. Work who out front now. Our test now, Edgar. The big, the big men here for Irvine, by the way, can shoot it. So Velp is a threat on the perimeter. This time he puts it on the floor and scores on the jump hook. Yeah, I was watching him in warm-ups earlier. He was knocking down threes uh, during the warm-ups, and you see him right there. He catches there. He turned around and just went old school and yeah. backed the guy down in for the easy turnaround, taking advantage of his height there. Yeah, he's knocked down 42% of his threes here to start this season. Here's Farabello. Fuller with it. Farabella with the floater. It looked almost as if he thought Samuel was trailing the play to finish it. Well, he was definitely looking for Kevin to go in for an alley-oop dunk there. And I'm sure that UC Irvine saw the tape from the Air Force game right. where Kevin Samuel had about five of those. So they are going to take that away first and foremost. Here's Velp. Fall away over Greer. And the rebound, Jair. That's a nice job by Greer to go back for that rebound. Rocks by two. We'll get a timeout of the next dead ball. P.J. Fuller out front. In traffic, slapped away in another turnover here for TCU. Yeah, you want to see TCU to keep staying aggressive, going to the basket, even though they're making almost 12 three-pointers a game. 
but they're, the refs are kind of letting them play at this point. A lot of bumping going on, on the drives. Jumper from the baseline is off for Artest, but a rebound for Green, and let's see if we got a jump ball. Yes. Possession arrow is going to leave it with the Anteaters out of the timeout. 6-4 right now, TCU leading it. On a UC Irvine here, it's Jamie Dixon's team trying to remain undefeated on the season and at home. Up 6-4 right now. Irvine with possession of it, and Isaiah Lee, who's in the lineup for the first time out of Sydney, Australia, triggers that inbound. Colin Felt backing it in. Works it around. Deontay Smith, who's in. Got his own rebound, did Felt. That time, missed again. Smith, a couple of hands on it. Pulls this one down. And he was just a little unlucky, unlucky to start the game. Had a couple of shots kind of rim out there. Ed Dennis is into the lineup. Edrick has it out front now. PJ Fuller with a touch. Dennis works out front here on Lee. And they're trying to run Desmond Bain off a screen there on the baseline, trying to get him another shot. Deontay Smith penetrates with two on the shot clock, and this one's going to go out of bounds. You're going to have one second here on the inbounds. See if Jamie Dixon uses this as a teaching moment. It's going to be TCU's basketball. Let's see what he does here. Yeah, watch something for Desmond Bain coming off that double screen on the bottom there uh, for a jump shot around the baseline. He'll catch it and rise up and shoot right away. Almost like an end-of-game sequence right now. Gary Maxwell yeah, walks good, over. A good play right here would be Kevin Samuel just to step right in front of Deontay Smith's guy sure, yeah. and let him take one step back and, back, and knock it down. Edrick Dennis to inbounds. Let's see what they do. Well, the second to work with. Catch, shoot, Fuller. Did he get off in time? No. But there's Bain with the offensive glass, and he missed that one. That was really nice position by Desmond Bain getting on the backside for that rebound. Might have got a hip check a little bit there. Yeah, turnover going here. up, but yeah. he needed to still need to finish that one. Yeah, I think Jamie Dixon thought he was fouled. Here's Deontay Smith pulls the trigger on it jumper that's awfully quick Jamie Dixon will not like that he thought that the Frogs for the most part took great shots the other night against Air Force with one exception and that was a shot by Deontay Smith he may say the same on that one yeah it's a little early in the shot clock for that coming down the sideline there and especially if you're getting good shots out of your offense which they did the first few possessions of the game Austin Johnson with it out front he's out of Marietta Georgia his first time in he catches here in the lane put it on the floor on Fuller and a foul here on the reach in. Well, that was a tough call. It's a really nice job of uh, P.J. Fuller rotating over there to stop that uh, drive. He just kind of swam the ball through right here. P.J. does a nice job stepping over. Nice little swim move to get the ball over. I don't know why he put the ball on the floor, but yeah. Well, that's going to be on Deontay Smith. That goes back to the conversation we were having. Catch it high, keep it high. Catch high, keep it high. Didn't yeah. have to. P.J. Fuller wasn't going to jump. He had his uh, arms straight up in the air already. If he did jump, he wasn't going to get very far. Yeah. <laughs> Austin Sorry, Johnson. Make it up. Yeah. Johnson's now 8 of 9 on the free throw line. From the free throw line to start this season. Aiden Krause checks in for the first time for the Anteaters. He's out of Queensland, Australia, as is Devin Cole, who's in. This is a deep roster. They'll go 10, 11 deep. Keep well, them fresh to keep yes. playing that hard defense and rebounding. I'm yeah. interested to see uh, Jaden Ledee here on the block and the battle they're going to have down here especially on the defensive end, because Jaden's a very physical, tough player for the Frogs. Ledee, for the first time, sets that screen there for it. Ed Dennis. And this one out of bounds off of TCU. Another turnover for the Frogs. Aiden Krause will inbound. You hear Russell Turner in the background, the head coach here. Isaiah Lee. It's Devin Cole pulling the trigger. A really nice contest there by Deontay Smith coming up to help on that high screen. Fuller leaves for Ed Dennis for three. A nice pass from Fuller. Had to pull his arm back a little bit to get the bounce pass to him, but he saw his teammate, Edric Dennis Jr., wide open on the wing, knocked down the three. Who's coming? Who's coming? Isaiah Lee Who's again. Coming? Velp with it, another travel by a big man here. Yeah, Velp's kind of lucky he got called for a travel and not a charge there because Smith is in a really nice position. Velp's just turning around and lowering his shoulder and trying to get to the basket and trying to push him back in there. Here's another look. Happened right before the replay. Here's the thing, though. You know, Russell Turner prides himself on his big man. 
He's a terrific big man coach. He's not going to like those turnovers by the big fellows down there. No, he's not. And he's had a couple of really good opportunities down low with him that the ball's just kind of rimmed out. And they'll try to get fixed here. And Dennis again. 18 footer that time for Edrick. Graduate transfer from UTA. He had some really good games for UTA. Can really fill it up. Oh, yeah. Especially from deep. He gets hot. Five point lead right now for TCU. Out of 12 25 to play in this first half. Lee on the dribble. Tried to dish down low. Nice quick hands for Ladee, who was last to touch it. So we're looking really, baseline for Austin. This is a really nice job by Edward Dennis Jr. here out on the perimeter. It's not just incumbent upon the defender in the post to, to guard the guy down low and try to prevent it by uh, three-quarter uh, fronting him. The guys on the perimeter need to get up and get their hands up and make it difficult for the guards to throw it into the big guys as well. And he did a really nice job there. That time he got tapped away. Here's Johnson on the inbounds. Ran into the brick wall. Yeah. <laughs> Called Jaden Ledee. Got a trap in the corner. That one goes out of bounds on the end line. Devin Cole dribbled that one. And back to TCU it comes. So they'll come back now with the starters, Jerron Artest, along with Yasu Worku. Back into the lineup of guard now for UC Irvine. Worku did a nice job the first couple of times he touched the ball, getting the ball into the paint and getting a nice shot up on the rim. We'll see if he can continue to try to Get some penetration here. Baines and Nimhart on the floor again for TCU. Kevin Samuels getting a bit of a break. Ed Dennis operating as a point guard. There's Nimhart for the jump of the three. That was a, a, a nice shot in rhythm, high release, nice high arc. That shot is completely different than the one he totally. had his freshman year. Yeah, and it can be different than what you see later on. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, when he has time to come set like that, you're right. No question, but he shot that with a lot of confidence. And uh, you see the result when you shoot the ball with confidence like that. Yeah, moving screen here for Austin Johnson. He's going to be with whistled for the first one. He's going to bring us to the timeout here right now. 11.37 left. Ed Dennis getting it happening. Nice little dish there to RJ Nimhard for the three. Frogs up by eight. First half action here at Show My Arena. Tommy Rutherford pacing the sidelines here, the head coach. Or it should be Russell Turner, I should say. Look at it, Tommy Rutherford there. Pace on the sidelines. He's going to get Rutherford back into the lineup. Here's a look at the numbers. When you compare these two teams, you can see Irvine it turned it over more than the Frogs have at nearly 17 a game. That rebounding total as well. They average about 13 more rebounds than their opponent. Yeah, that's showing that their opponent's only getting 29 a game. So that's a, uh, that's a, a, a nice number if you're, if you're the Anteaters holding them to 29 a game. Here you see Jamie Dixon wants to see his team improve in that category, by the way. That's one of the stats they keep. They like a, a plus 10 rebounding margin with TCU. Coming into this game, they're just about plus 6. 11.35 to go here in this first half. Nice rebound there on the offensive end. Deontay Smith. Able to track it down but not convert. Yeah, it was a nice job coming in from the offensive uh, backside, grabbing the rebound, turn around. Nobody was between him and the basket. Get a good shot up. Hard test. Work who to the free throw line. Green backs it in. A rebound here for Ed Dennis. Nice, nice board by Edward Dennis Jr. there. Nimhart, nice lead there for Ladee, who's fouled. I don't know how he saw him. This is a great, great leave here by Nemhard, flying into the basket. He kind of got caught on the baseline there and didn't really have anywhere to go with it. So as he's in the air, as you see here, he drives to the basket, gets up with hardly anywhere to go. And Ladid happened to be making himself available in the middle of the lane. It's a good play. Nice wrap around that time for RJ Nemhard. Jaden Lee D, who became eligible on November the 18th. Hey, hey, hey. Sophomore out of Houston. That's his first point as a frog. There'll be more. Absolutely. Deontay Smith at Dennis. Check out. Farabella returns at point guard for TCU. Also, Jair Grayer returns. Lee misses a second. Green with a rebound. Frog still up here by nine, 15 to six, 10.42 left. 
Our test. Work who? Entry to Velp. Here's Velp. Put his shoulder into him and then laid it up with the left hand. Yeah, that's the first one that's kind of bounced around on the rim and finally dropped for the Anteaters there in the post. They keep going back to it. That's where their advantage is in this game. They'll keep going into that post. Here's Bain wrap around. And a steal here. Ladia unable to handle the pass at Workhoot. That was actually a really nice job by Workhoot to not pass that ball to his teammate. I think Ladia coming back on the on the trail there would intercept it, and Workhoot was able to kind of notice it coming. Brad Green just backs down. Jaden Ladie. Yeah, that's a big boy right there. He's yeah. uh, 6'10". Ladie's having a little laugh with him down there, saying he got the best of me this time. Away from the ball is a foul here. Yeah, Green goes about 270. Foul here is going to be whistled on our test. We mentioned Ron Artest is the son of Meta World Peace, formerly known as Ron Artest. He'll check out of the lineup. John Edgar comes in. Inbound's going to come from Farabello. Bain, catch and shoot. He's had yep. good looks at it here, Colin. It was a good look, and, and it was actually a really nice job by RJ Nemhart, basically calling for him to come over his screen. So the defender turned his head for a split second and looked like he was going to go try to have to get around RJ's screen, and then he came off the double wide open on the baseline. He's just got to knock it down. Here's Krause with it. Now Edgar to the elbow for the jumper. Felt may have gotten away with a push there. Catch and shoot for Workhoop. Kevin Samuel back the other That's way. Here's pass. RJ. Yeah, RJ. I don't even think RJ necessarily was ready for that. <laughs> he didn't think he was going to throw it. Um, led him perfectly if he would have uh, had his feet right. Could have uh, gathered it and gone in for the layup there. Just took his eye off it for a split second. Work who walks it up. Down low catch here for Velp. It's Desmond Bain over the top. Able to knock it away. Yeah, good help from the top side there for Desmond Bain. It's not the best angle to throw into the post there, but Velp's got such a decided height advantage there that it's, it's going to be tough for, uh, for Greer to continue to guard him that low down there. Left elbow here, work who misses. There's Edgar another, with a rebound. And there's another art right there. Bell getting his hand up, getting a tip out there. Yep. Remember that shot clock resets to 20. Grayer got a piece of the arm, Darren George says. On the block that time of Velp. Yeah, that's a that might be a tough call. This is one of those where if you get just the bottom of the ball, right. and then your follow through on the block hits his elbow, they give that to the so you get can't really tell from that angle if he got the ball or not, but Sometimes when you do get the bottom of the ball there and you follow through, it still looks like you hit the arm, and that's why it ended up short. Nine times out of ten, that's going to go to the offensive player. Belt misses the first one. Colin Belt's a decent free throw shooter coming into this ball game. He's now 13 of 17 on the year. Of course, his dad was a terrific player at the University of Washington. U-Dub's all-time leading scorer was Christian Velp. Played a couple of seasons in the NBA as well. Farabello, now Nimhart. Deontay, check that out. was Greer missing from the corner. It's a tough catch and turn there for Greer. Didn't really catch it in rhythm for the shot. Sometimes you probably get a little bit better one than that. Frogs continue to work their offense. First few possessions of the game, they got really good looks by working their offense, and they seem to have gone away from that a little bit here. Lead down to four, and here's Kevin Samuel committing the foul. Well, this game is a game of runs, right? Yeah. So six to six, the Frogs went on a 9-0 run, and uh, the Anteaters here on a 5-0 run looking to add more. Green to the free throw line. Big fellow that Russell Turner has molded into a pretty good big man. Red-shirted last year. After playing all 35 games a year before, did Brad Green, where he averaged about four points and four rebounds, and he's already doubling that here now. His junior year, he knocks in that second free throw. Yeah, he's averaging 6.2 boards a game. He's already got five tonight. 
That was one of our keys when we started the game here. How would the Frogs rebound with them? And right now the Anteaters have them by a four point, or a, excuse me, a four rebound margin. Two point lead here for TCU. Grayer with it on the move. Jair hangs in the air and scores. That's a really athletic move and a tough shot too. Going to your left, getting into the paint, but you got to jump stop and really elevate and get the ball back to your right hand shooting hand. Really difficult shot, especially with a big guy in your face, but Grayer, the senior, knows how to get that one done. And as high as he gets up, it's so hard to defend, too. No, right? no question. Yeah, yeah, that's the advantage of the guy driving versus the guy just standing on his t on both feet on the on the block already or in the paint already. Is you get that momentum to help you raise up higher than the uh, than defender. There's Cole with it with three on the shot clock with the left hand. Try to leave it for Green and Samuel's going to tap it out of bounds. And they're going to say the shot clock expires first. Break there for TCU. They cling to a four-point lead here. 7.26 left. As Jair Grayer hangs for the deuce. So the defense, they're both playing early. On. Well, the Frogs had a good opportunity, or a good run there, but 9 nothing when they hit a couple of threes and made a couple free throws in there. Um, but that all started on the defensive end and making stops and getting out on the break a little bit. And... Uh, you know, they, the Anteaters have kind of gotten back to what they do best, get the ball inside and score a couple baskets down low. Frogs with possession of it out of the timeout. Farabello out on the floor, operating as the point guard here for TCU. You know, one stat that we, we haven't talked about yet is the Anteaters are 0 for 2 from 3 at this point. Yeah. It's been a long time since we uh, called the game or they – haven't had a three-pointer this late into the game. Our test with a steal and the finish just stepped in the passing lane that time and able to come up with a basketball. Yeah, Frogs a little careless with the ball there. Leads to an easy layup there for the Anteaters. Frogs have turned it over seven times in this first half already. Here's Nimhard from 18. Quick shot on the offense. Samuel going to commit his second personal foul. Yeah, that's the last thing that the Frogs wanted to see right there. Kevin picking up his second, having to go to the bench here. Coach Dixon will get the D in the game for him. These are the type of fouls that he has got to avoid throughout the season. Frogs need his presence down there on the, not just the offensive end, but also the defensive end. Isaiah Lee out of Sydney, Australia. He's just a freshman point guard. His dad played for UC Irvine back in the 80s. Here, Artest had his pocket pick. Ladee comes up with it. Great hustle by Ladee, getting his hand in there and pick in the pocket of our test. Here's Bain. And hard again. RJ with a finger roll. Nice rebound. Yeah, Lee went over. Isaiah Lee that time did Ladee. There's Bain strong to the rim. And there's Ladee again, another offensive rebound. So the shot clock rule this year now is uh, on an offensive rebound, you only get 20 seconds on the shot clock. Right. It automatically resets to that, so the Frogs already down to 10 here. R.J. Nimhard, Farabello from the corner. And this time Irvine's able to grab it. The Anteaters rebound for John Edgar. And good looks, and Coach Dixon will not be upset with the, you know, the, getting the rebounds on the offensive glass, especially against a good offensive rebounding, or a defensive rebounding team. Got to just put the ball in the hole. Edgar, Johnson free throw line. Rebound tapped around Lee. Thought he was out of bounds here when he comes up with it. And now a jump ball tie up, and this one should go to TCU, and it will. Well, I thought when Isaiah Lee touched that basketball, I think that's what Jamie Dixon is telling him, that he's out of bounds when he touched it. Well, not only that, he was the last one to touch it before he went out of bounds. So you have to reestablish yourself in bounds. There's Lee touching it. Yeah, well, mm. close. Uh, we need the super slow-mo cameras <laughs> that the NFL has, I guess. That's really tough to tell. Two-point lead still for TCU now with possession of it. Come on, Jane! Come on, Jane! Bain, there's Fuller with a high arcing three, and the rebound taken out of there now by Grayer, who's got now three. Offensive rebounds does TCU in the last three possessions. Yeah, it's really, really nice job by Greer going to the offensive glass here, and Frogs get another extra possession here. Bain from the elbow, Desmond. That's good. Just getting to his, getting to a spot that he feels comfortable raising up and knocking down a shot. Not really contested. Maybe that'll get him going here a little bit. Four-point margin. 
Sometimes as a shooter, you just need to see the ball go in once. That's why they say a lot of times if you can't knock down a jump shot, try to get to the free throw line so you can see the ball go in. Velp turns it over here. Back to the Frogs, and they have that four-point lead. Jamie Dixon, well, that Dennis out at the point guard right now. We'll get it in the hands of Desmond Bain, who had it punched away by Artest, just like his dad, pretty good defender. His dad, Ron Artest, with the NBA's Defensive Player of the Year in 2004. Took the, I can't remember what game it was. He took that, that famous three-pointer that he knocked down in the playoff game where everybody's like, no, 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 don't shoot it. <laughs> he yep. knocks it down. She's sure. like, yes. like, what are you talking about? I'm just playing basketball. Right, exactly. <laughs> the other way, the other way. The other way, Ed Dennis. Penetrates. That one slapped away. Nice save there by Fuller. Grayer for three. Made a pick. Uh, that was a great job by Fuller to chase that ball down. Instead of waiting and watch that ball go out of bounds, he chased it down, was able to find Grayer wide open on the outside for a three-pointer. Nice hustle by uh, Fuller there. Lead back to seven here for TCU. Warku now Velp. Aiden Krause is back out there. He got rid of it quickly to Warku. Velp catch and shoot. And rhythm, big fella stepping back, knocked in the three. He's, he's, got, a, he's got a lot of different offensive specialties to his game. Yep. He, if he can knock down threes like that and still a lot of times he's caught the ball on the perimeter and dribbled in and backed the guy down. He's got up and down moves and everything. He's been really impressive offensively. Fuller, and this one tapped out of bounds by Ledee. Fuller kept that one kind of low as he went in for the layup, Colin. Yeah, Frogs are just a little unlucky here on the layups a couple times. Four-point ball game right now. It's a good one in the first half here with 3.35 left at Schulmeyer in Fort Worth. Those are going to be good players in the future as well. Pearson, by the way, who's sitting out as a finalist for Kentucky's Mr. Basketball. It's a good state to be Mr. Basketball. I was going to say. 3.20 to go here in this first half. Work you. Now Velp. Velp's been their offensive threat of late. Spinning in the lane with a left hand. Kept it alive, and the follow goes on the put back here for Johnson. So when a guy does that many up and under moves and spin moves and keeps that pivot foot down and gets it up on the rebound, it's really difficult for the other players to get a box out in because they have the other guys have so much more time to push you all the way underneath the basket. That's, that's what exactly what happened there with Johnson going in and get the rebound there. And, and by the way, fans assume with all those moves that he's traveling, that he's shuffling his feet, but he never did. And that's the first thing I looked at was watch his pivot foot, and yeah. he, he kept it down. He did a nice job of keeping it down, staying under, under control, and... Definitely did not travel. Fuller thought about the step back. Ed Dennis has got it. Frogs don't get it off. Grayer unable to shoot it in time. The Frogs turn it back over here. That's one, of the, over eight. Yeah, that's one of those possessions that just will drive a coach crazy because the 30-second clock is right in front of you. It's on the side from the corner, so you can see it there. And it's also on the other end of the court. Like, always got to be aware of clock and score. You see Jamie Dixon conferring with Ryan Miller. Long-time assistant here at TCU, Punch associate it, head coach. Point it, point it, point it, point it. Worku out front. 2.25 to play in the hand. Frogs by two. Well has it. Good backside help there from Edward Dennis Jr. How about the extra pass? Worku to Artest, who can't knock it down. With a rebound, Grayer can't claim it, and the foul committed here by Ed Dennis. Yeah, it's an unlucky bounce there for the Frogs. Good extra pass to the corner to get the shot for our test. Edward Dennis Jr. did as best he could to get out there to contest it. And the shot was missed, but the Frogs just need to corral the rebound there. Long conversation going on here between Jamie Dixon and longtime official Gary Maxwell, who's one of the best. One of the good things about these veteran officials, a guy like Gary Maxwell, is he talks to the coaches. He explains things to them, tells them why. Absolutely. I, that's as a player, too. I remember Steve Wilmer, he's yes. always, he was a great official at talking to the players. Just right. Like, if you think you got there for a block or for a charge and he calls a block, and he'll, he'll say right away, nope, your feet weren't set. Yeah. And then, like, 
how am I going to argue that? Sure. Tell you right away. <laughs> well, hey, Gary Maxwell just told uh, Jamie Dixon that's the way I've been calling it for 35 years, Coach. That's right. Here's Desmond Bain. Penetrate, leave it outside for Nimhart. Yeah, this one's going to be off of TCU. Yeah. Game's getting pretty physical right it now. Is. And I'm not sure who that gives the advantage to because when you've got an enforcer inside like Brad Green for UC Irvine, that might be advantage anteaters. Yeah, it's probably advantage anteaters because they're also used to playing like that, right? With two big guys going inside all the time and then also with Kevin Samuel sitting on the bench, the Frogs yeah. big guy with two fouls. They just, the Frogs just have to adopt the mentality of a team rebound, on the especially on the defensive end. Shot goes up, everybody's to the boards. Corner jumper here for Edgar off the mark. Bain with the rebound. Frogs back the other way. Good look up. Yes. Ladee finishes. No call there on the foul. That's amazing. There was no call on that. Ladee goes up, scores, and, and God, flies right into him body to body. I'm not sure what the uh, officials look on that one. Jamie's probably got a good argument there. Big fella Green out front with it. Felt now. On Grayer, Artes. Work who uses that left hand for an advantage on Ed Dennis, slapping his hand around the screen. Work who dishes Green, but an offensive foul first. Nice job from the D. Remained composed after the no call on the other end. Came back, had a nice defensive set, and then slides over and takes a charge there. Ball back to the Frogs. Good energy here defensively for TCU. Absolutely. And, you know, that's one of the things that they've frankly been lacking a little bit of in the first couple of games of the season. But getting a guy like Jaden Ledee back, who's, he's a, he talks really well on defense, communicates with, with his uh, teammates, and does a really nice job there stepping over and taking a charge. He's going to be one of these guys that you're going to you're going to want to go to battle with every night because he's going to give all-out all effort every time. Jaden Ledee providing good minutes off the bench here in place of Kevin Samuel. He's got those two personal fouls. They take Green out of the lineup and bring Austin Johnson back in as a big man for Irvine. And there's a cylinder violation here. Artest. Second on Jerron Artest. So on, on defense there, you're going to want to... You're going to want to get up under Desmond Bain because he's, he's in range when he catches sure. the ball right there, right? With, with about 38.6 left here, what the Frogs will want to do, just work for the best shot that they can here. And the reset gives you 20 on the shot clocks. So. Right. See, I'm not, I'm not used to the 30-second. Right. Going down to 20, 20 after yeah. a foul. Yeah, all of a sudden, you got to work fairly quickly and, here. And my thought becomes not not a good one. <laughs> Here's Bain. Whistled. Here, we'll go to the free throw line. And this one's going to be on Austin Johnson. That's a second on big Austin Johnson. So, to the free throw line now should go Desmond Bain, which is a rare trip for him. Bain just three of three from the free throw line this year in three games. Yeah, I'm a little shocked by that number, but he's also getting a lot of looks um, on the perimeter, and they're trying to make do a concerted effort to get Kevin Samuel the ball a lot in right. these games too inside, right? So not a lot of opportunities to drive when you got your big guy on the block in front of you, and your the goal is to try to get it into him. Quick timeout taken here by Russell Turner. He's use it or lose at 30. Spain made the first free throw. The lead's at three right now, 25-22. Jamie Dixon. Talking about the final 25 seconds here, shot clock will be off. So if the frog, or excuse me, if the anteaters are able to score here, let's say four seconds or something like that here, Jamie Dixon should immediately use his yes. 30 or uh, second use it or lose it timeout because the clock doesn't stop in the first half, right? Right. And you, by the time your guy gets the ball out of the net and gets out of bounds and throws it in, another two seconds probably will come off unless they're like right on top of things. Might as well call timeout and try to set up the play. And you know what? He's got that timeout just in case Irvine decides, because this may be what Russell Turner's told his guys. Hey, you know, if we if we score, let's put a little pressure on him in the backcourt, too. Absolutely. Try to slow it up. Yep. Here's Bain at the line. But they also should wait until two seconds left yes. to shoot the ball here. Yep. Don't give TCU any opportunity to come down and score. Bain makes them both, remains perfect from the line. Down to the final 20 seconds now. The ball in the hands of Worku, the senior. They're going to hold it here. 
Bunch with his four point advantage should go into the locker room with a lead. Screen comes. Rutherford, Burku, leaves for Velt. Down to five, and there's a steal. Nice steal by RJ. Nimhart, finish with a second left for the hand. Great job by RJ Nimhart anticipating that Velt didn't want to back him down. He's been, he's, every time he caught on the wing, he backed the guy down to the paint, but he think he ran out of time. And RJ just runs right through the passing lane. See it right here coming down. Frogs up 26, 28, 22, going to half. Yeah, you'll want to see Desmond Bain get a, get going here in the second half. I think the Anteaters will try to take away Kevin Samuel in the paint again. Frogs are going to have to knock down some shots here if they want to keep this lead. Russell Turner, on the other hand, the head coach at UC Irvine. His team as well turned it over 11 times in the first half. He can't be happy with that. And you can already see Jamie Dixon yelling at Kevin Samuel to be ready to play because he didn't play as many minutes as, he, minutes as he usually did in the first half. So he's got to almost kind of get warmed up again and get ready to go. Farabello, Nimhard, Bain, along with Grayer and Samuel start this second half. That's big Brad Green on the inside with a turnaround jump hook. Start this second half for Irvine. That's a really nice play by yep. Brad Green under control. Frost is going to have to send some help from the perimeter there and dig out on that if he puts it on the floor like that. Here's a steal here. Worku comes up with it. Beats it off down low for the running one-hander for Edgar. The follows off the mark, and it goes out of bounds off of TCU. And Frog's got to go after that rebound with two hands. Got to secure it before he can go the other way. Worku, Edgar, and Art Tess, the three guards on the floor right now for Irvine to start this second. Green, who catches there on the inbounds, and Rutherford, the big man. Worku, the running one-hander, got it. Well, that was a tough shot. Big Kevin Samuel bearing down on him, too. He was able to get it up on the glass, go in for the layup. Two-point margin, 28-26. There's Samuel. You can hear the chance from the head coach there. Russell Turner wanting the double team. It comes too late. Samuel scores. Yeah, when Desmond Bain initially entered that pass to him, it kind of took Kevin off the block. He had to step out to get it. I thought that he was going to end up actually passing out of that. When they started yelling for the double team to come, I was actually a little bit surprised. I thought they would probably just probably play him straight up when he's 15 feet away. Worku penetrates. Foul here on the reach. You know, Worku did a nice job in the first half of penetrating, kind of getting into the lane when he wanted to. And that's the third foul there on Farabello. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think they whistled that one. Let's see, and they may whistled it on Kevin Samuel, and they oh. do, and that it is his third. Free throw line now is Worku. Good free throw shoot, about 80% of his career. Ladee back into the lineup. Kevin Samuel with that quick third foul will have to sit. Yeah, you got to have him in the game as often as he can if you want to be successful. As, as talented as he is on the offensive end, obviously just scored in the last possession as well. But he also blocks shots and rebounds for you. Kevin had that 19.11 rebound game in the last outing for TCU against Air Force. Frog lead is down to two now. 90 seconds into this second half. Nimhard, Farapello, works on Worku. Grayer, corner now, Farabello. That one goes out of bounds, and let's see. So that was a nice nice play by Grayer, yep, driving in addition. Farabello had a nice look at it. He ha hasn't found the mark yet tonight. He's 0 for 5 from the floor, but we'll take they'll take those shots all day long. And live with it. Farabello had 11 against Air Force, as we mentioned. Two-point ball game. Irvine can tie this one or take the lead. They've never led in this game. Frogs have won or uh, led from the start. Here's a floater that goes. That's a two-pointer to tie it. At 30, is work who's starting to heat up a little bit offensively now. Yeah, he's definitely getting involved every possession. Average is 13. He's got six for those here in the second half. And 26 in a game earlier this year against yep. Pepperdine. 17 and a half left. So he's certainly capable of lining it up. Nimhart. Grayer entry. Ladee works on Green. And a foul here on Brad Green. Well, that's really good strength to turn around and 
fight through that to get the ball up on the rim, draw the contact and the foul from Green. Yeah, the thing about Green is he not only is he 6'10 or 11, they list him at 6'11, more close, more likely 6'10. He's so wide in there as well. Yeah, the only thing that got him right there is he didn't keep his arm straight up. He kind of let it get out to that 45 degree angle, and almost every time you do that, the official's going to side with the offensive player as you go up through it. Jaden Ledee, the sophomore, knocks in the free throw there. That's also one of the more difficult things to do as a post player is to just stay vertical and live with the consequences of if the shot goes in or not. You kind of get that. You want to get your hand in there. And get the, they used to say, get your hand caught in the cookie jar. <laughs> Ledee's second is good. Back to the two-point TCU margin. Irvine has played some zone this year. We haven't really seen it here tonight, though, against TCU. And they're on the defensive end. Our test here offensively. Rutherford. Tommy Bates line with the left hand. And it's been a long time since we've called a game where a team, their focus is all inside. I mean, almost every team nowadays is get up and down the floor and they're shooting a bunch of threes. It makes it actually, go a little, I think, a little more difficult for TCU to defend this yeah. because they're not used to doing it. Baseline jumper here. Dennis misses Green with another rebound. That's the one thing that Jamie Dixon's always done in his non-conference scheduling is he's shown his team a lot of different looks. You know, Air Force gave you that Princeton look here tonight. This one based on the interior play, the play of the postman, and Rutherford fouled here on the bump as Irvine trying to take the lead for the first time in this game. Yeah, no, the, the scheduling has always been part of the the reasoning behind the teams you schedule so you see a bunch of different looks because sure. you're going to see all these different things throughout the league play especially. Teams always try to throw different wrinkles at you. Not everybody just mans up and goes, see who can guard the best. Deontay Smith gets credit for the block. And Dennis with a floater. Too strong. Smith with a quick jumper. Got it for the elbow. Yeah, it'll be nice to see Deontay Smith get going here. He's had a couple of good looks there from about 12 feet. Gets that one to go. Freshman out of Fort Walton Beach. He is definitely capable of filling it up. He yes. gets hot. Average 17 a game in high school. Green holds. Now work who? Pretty good defense there by Dennis. Rutherford again to the rim. Yeah, I'd really like to see the Frogs try to dig out of that right there. As soon as Rutherford turns his head and puts the ball on the floor, I'd like to see Edric Dennis down there trying to scoop the ball out from the big guy. I think he's having an opportunity for a couple turnovers there. 15 and a half left, Nimhard for three. RJ misses, and the rebound here is going to be off of Rutherford. Should bring us to a timeout on the floor. Frogs with possession out of the timeout, 20 on the shot clock here. On the reset, and Ed Dennis with the honors. Had to trigger it. Gary Maxwell hands in the ball. Here's a quick shot from Desmond Bain in rhythm. Yeah, see, that, the reason I love that play is, is he's rubbing him off a screen, and you know he's going to come open. He elevates so high that hardly any defender is going to be able to get to it and block it. So he's catching it knowing he's going to rise up and shoot, and he can practice that exact shot all the time, which he does. Lee with a travel here, got his feet tied up. That's pretty good defense here by Ed Dennis to call Zen. Yeah, and you, you like the enthusiasm on defense. The energy frogs need a little bit of that to get a spark going here. Edric Dennis operating as a point guard right now. And Deontay Smith on the floor together. Nice dish outside. Art J with it. M hard. Can't convert through the double team. Lee pushes. I like the aggressiveness going to the basket, but if you you haven't been getting calls going to the basket like that, you gotta at some point not try to force the issue too. Velp with it out front. The left elbow with the left hand. And standing out of bounds, I think when he touched it was Jaden Ledee. So that's seven unfortunate. It's really yeah. nice defense. Velp coming with the sweeping left-handed hook, trying to go off the glass, too. That would have been a uh, quite a shot if you knocked that one down. They have just seven on the shot clock to work with here. Lead to inbounds. You see right there, Velp just says, get out of the way to his own teammate. Pushed our test out of the way. He said, I'm going to go get it. 
I'm not sure they realize the shot clock. And yeah, they don't. Yeah, Belt kicked that out thinking that that uh, Lee was going to shoot that ball. But in reality, that's a tough – that's a tough – putting your teammate in a very tough position because if they close out to you really hard, yeah. you're going to have a tough shot. Belt's certainly capable of getting that shot off from eight feet away. He probably should just put it up. I think that's what Russell Turner wanted on that inbounds. Here's Payne to the free throw line. He travels. It's a good call. Yeah, the Frogs are going to have to adjust here to getting bumped a little bit. If they're going to let them play through this, I mean, it's no different than really than league play. Yes. Yeah. You know, you usually don't get it like this in, in a uh, in a non-conference game, but it's a nice test for the Frogs. You're going to see have to execute down the road here. We're down to 14 minutes left in this ball game. Frogs up by two. Our test. Remember, this is a Irvine team, UC Irvine team that won 31 last year. Yeah, that's a nice move right there. It's, you can't defend that at his no. size. Just a little quick shimmy and right over the left shoulder. Easy shot for him. And then a lazy pass here from Smith. We have seen this a couple of times. Edgar on the finish. And he's lucky he didn't get called for a foul there. Almost compounded the, yep. the, uh, the mistake there. And a timeout going to be taken here by Jamie Dixon. Irvine with a two-point lead. But we've seen that a couple of times now on the perimeter that the Anteaters have been in. Able to snag one for the steal. They do it here. And the finish this time from John Edgar Jr. Gives him a two-point margin. 13-27 left in this one. Not in the last time he touched the ball, he turned it over. So they'll probably run a play for him where he can catch it with his feet set and get a good look at the basket right here. 13-25 to go. Frogs are down by two out of the timeout. P.J. Fuller with it here. To Edric Dennis. Dennis with a baseline, high off the class. Nice follow there for Kevin Samuel, who's back in with those three fouls. Yeah, and there you see right away Kevin Samuel making his presence, presence felt, coming in on the offensive glass with the easy tip in. Lee, Johnson, Valp in a travel here. Kevin's going to have to, Kevin Samuel's going to have to make sure he doesn't pick up that fourth foul here to sit down again. He's got to. Play, be able to play with those fouls because there's going to be other situations and other times this year where they need him on the floor, just if, it, especially in close games when they need his just offensive production, let alone his rebounding and, and block shots. So I'm anxious to see how he's going to do that because you're still going to be putting him, you're still going to be putting him in pick and rolls, which is always a case where you might get a, a screen uh, called for a moving screen. Fuller from the elbow. or going over the back right there. There it is, it right there. Yeah, and that's going to be his fourth. I think that's a good call, though, Colin. Darren George called it from across the way. Yeah, it, I think you might be right, but at the same time, they haven't called that for the most of the game. You see the replay here. P.J. Fuller goes up for the shot. Boy, I don't know. Not a lot of contact. Not a lot of contact. Certainly not enough, enough contact to the, uh, a lot of the other plays that they've let go tonight. Kevin Samuel has to sit. Jane Ledee back into the lineup. Tied at 38. This will be a nice challenge for the Frogs here. Yep. Tie game with 12.30 to go. Or cool with it. And remember now, we talked about the fact that this is a deep anteater team as well. They're not yet tired down the stretch. He's been playing a lot of players as Russell Turner all year long. Here's a well, potential steal. Somehow Velt ends up with a dish from Orku for the deuce. Well, that's one of the things with the biggest guy on the floor, 6'10", green, Dives on the floor and comes up with the loose ball, and the Anteaters get a layup out of it. That's a uh, unfortunate turn of events there for the Frogs. Ten players have played in this game for Irvine, and all but two of them have played double-digit minutes. That tells you how he's been rotating them here. This one goes out of bounds off of TCU and brings us to a timeout on the floor with 11:54 left. Yeah, Irvine 8 out of 12 from the floor to start the second half here. But the Frogs have four turnovers. It's kind of feeding into that a little bit. Isaiah Lee brings it up. And Eaters with possession out of the timeout. Brad Green flashes and scores. That's the danger you have when you come out on a high screen like that and flash to, to, to stop the dribble penetration. If you go over that screen... It's very difficult for the backside defender because we're undersized. TCU's undersized. 
Especially when you got a big guy like Brad Green rolling sure. right down the middle. That's tough. That's a tough stop. Yeah, that's a big ask of PJ Fuller at six foot four trying to slow him down. That's right. Here's Fuller on the offensive end with a floater. That's a good sign for TCU. Get him going a little bit. He was a big prolific scorer in high school. Just needs to keep playing with a little bit of confidence on the offensive end. He can be streaky. Here's Lee. Aiden Krause turns it over. And I tell you, Russell Turner, his head coach, he, he not, not upset with the turnover by Krause. He was upset with his point guard, Isaiah Lee, and where that offense started. I think he wanted the ball to go to the other side because they had a post established inside already, and they've been dominating down there. They're getting whatever they want right at the rim. Freshman must take that time for Lee. Frogs within two, Fuller again. Him hard. Ten on the shot clock. Fuller comes to get it. Desmond Payne not on the floor right now. Fuller got caught in the air. Wow, tough finish. P.J. Fuller, coach was calling the play for him out front to go get a shot, and he just took a baseline. He got a little too far down to the baseline, got caught behind the, the, the basket there. Ended up turning it over. And Worku able to finish on the other end. Now the running one-hander goes. There you go. R.J. Nemhard, nice yep. drive there off the glass. Frogs need to get a couple stops here on defense. You see Irvine still getting whatever they want on the offensive end. At the 10-minute mark, Irvine with a two-point lead. Here's Lee at the baseline right. He's picked up his dribble. There you go. And another turnover here as Krause couldn't control it. And that might be the end of the freshman point guard. As you can see, Russell Turner not happy. Uh, he's, he's putting him in a tough spot a little bit when he comes off that, that ball screen. He's got Jaden Ledee and Edric Dennis Jr. jumping him, and those are the two most active defenders on TCU's team. So he's in a tough spot there. They probably just want to run the offense the other way away from those guys. I like that move there by Colin Velp who comes up to him. Or actually, that's Tommy Rutherford, the senior. Yep. Walking over to his freshman point guard, just saying, hey, hang in there, man. You know, we, we're going to need you down the stretch here. Absolutely, and he'll definitely get back in the game. There's still 10 minutes to go here. Nimhard fouled here on the penetration, and I think that's green. It's going to be whistled for the personal, and it is. That's his second. Still on the second team foul, and which is which is surprising given how physical the game has actually is. been. Yeah, TCU with three team fouls. Irvine with two, RJ at the free throw line. Nimhard knocked it in. We've talked about it time and time again. Nimhard has worked on that stroke at the free throw line, still perfect on the year. And I jinxed it. Back the other way now comes Irvine. Lead at one for the Anteaters. Frogs need to keep that energy up on the defensive side here. Felt with a nice little give that time for the easy. Deuce for Worku. Yeah, they're, the Anteaters are getting what they want on offense. They're running their offense exactly the way they want. Frogs have been, too. This game's actually starting to go back and forth a little bit, and R.J. Nemhart's starting to heat up. Yep. That should get him to double figures for the game with 11 now. Ties it at 46. trying to put together a trio of solid games here. And yeah, RJ's had a nice start to the season, averaging 15 points a game for him. Crowd trying to get back in this game now, too. Our test had it knocked away. Pretty good defense there for Nimhart. RJ been the offensive threat for TCU. This time just look. rising up. Yeah, the defender did. Bender didn't think he was going to rise up, so he was kind of backing up with the screen, thinking he was going to be able to go underneath it. RJ's like, okay, I'll just shoot over top of you. Tied at 46. Edgar. A rebound for Green again. It's a nice contest by Smith. Got to come up with that loose rebound, though. Our test in the corner. Get the ball in the hands of Horku, the yeah. senior. You got Desmond Bain. Nice dish. Covering Velp, and he got hacked on the back pretty hard. I don't know how that wouldn't call the foul. Yeah, Frog got away with one there. His tennis. Deontay thought about it. RJ will fire it. Uh, Deontay's got to give that ball up immediately, especially from a guy who just knocked down a three the last possession. That's got to be an automatic catch and pass to RJ stepping right into a shot. 
Foul here on Ladee on the push on the rebound. His first personal foul. Rutherford's going to get back into the lineup now for Irvine. He's going to check in for Velk. TCU's going to have to go to the bench now with Barlow checking in. Russell for the first time. So Coach is looking at Coach Dixon is looking at this as you got 8:23 left. You got the under under eight timeout coming. Russell, come in, just play your butt off for 30 seconds to give these guys a, a quick breather before they get them back out there. Yeah, Ladee especially, he checks out. It's that break here. Again, Ladee just eligible last week. And he's probably working his way into game shape as the three-pointer goes here for our test. There will there'll come a point in the game, too, even though the Kevin Samuels got four fouls where you just got to ride with him and hope that he doesn't pick up his fifth. We'll get a timeout of the next dead ball. Bain on the move to the rim. Nice drive by Desmond Bain. Good to see him get all the way to the rack because he's capable of doing it. And he hasn't got many trips to the foul line, but that's about the only way you're going to get to the foul line. Certainly, one point certainly in this game. Yeah, one point game. Our test, RJ had a hand on it. Work who with it. Ten on the shot clock. Edgar. Good closeout by Desmond there. Get to the shooter. Fall away from the baseline. Shot clock expires. Nice job there defensively for TCU. Yeah, it was a big stop going into the timeout here. Frogs will have the ball down one with 7.20 to go. Right now, 49-48. They hold on to that margin here on TCU in this second half out, scoring the Frogs 27-20. to They've gotten the looks that they wanted on offense, as you pointed out, Kyle. Yeah, and... Worku is going to work on the offensive end for the Anteaters. He's got 10 points here just in the second half. TCU getting it from a variety of sources. R.J. Nemhart scoring some here as well as Desmond Bain. Yeah, you take a look at that photo right there of one Scott Brooks, the head coach of the Washington Wizards, who is going into this – is, this is the interesting tie between these two schools. There he is in the TCU uniform. He played with Jamie Dixon. Coach Dixon's freshman year here at TCU. Then he transferred to UC Irvine. He's going in their Hall of Fame on November 30th is Scott Brooks. So an interesting tie between TCU and UC Irvine as this one's knocked out of bounds. Tommy Rutherford hit it last. And it'll be TCU's basketball still. We don't, we don't have a lot of scenarios where we have an NBA coach who played for both TCU and the team <laughs> we're playing. I know. <laughs> And away from the ball here. This might be a hold on our test, and it is. I think he anticipated a play coming here off the screen and just grabbed the jersey. Let's see what the Frogs come up with here. Last time they ran Desmond off of a screen. And bounce comes Desmond Bain. Out of the top with it. Works Dennis. Nimhard for the jumper. Just in and out there. And a foul here on Barlow. On that rebound grabbed by Austin Johnson. Foul on Russell Barlow's his first. And, you know, you talked about Rutherford going in and talking to Lee at that uh, after he got pulled out from yep. Coach uh, a few minutes ago. Look who just stepped on the floor. Lee steps right back on in a crunch time game under seven. One point game. Well, you talked about the fact they were going to need him down the stretch. Out of the top with it. Now works Isaiah Lee. Jump hook doesn't go this time for Rutherford. Another offensive rebound, but losing it out of bounds is Edgar, who thought he was fat. And I couldn't tell who got their hand in there. He uh, was able to slap it down. Because a big guy, if you bring it down, the little guys can get their hands in there and swat it away. Couldn't tell who get, from our angle who got their hand in there. But fortunate for the Frogs, went off of his leg, out of bounds. Desmond Bain. Edric Dennis, now to 12 on the shot clock around Lee. And there's a block for Austin Johnson. That's a nice help side yes. defense from Johnson coming over. 
You see Irvine by one. Power move inside here, and that's Tommy Rutherford who'll go to the line after the foul on Ladee. Yeah, it's pr probably a good foul. Rutherford does a really nice job of setting up good, good low post position there, and once you once you get it that low, as a defender, there's not much you can do except put him on the line, hope he misses his free throws. Rutherford has been pretty good this year from the free throw line. Six of seven misses that one. Now six of eight on the year. Another look here, that help defense you talked about. That's one of those. He was so high and he saw it coming. I don't know why he has to spike it off the right. You can so almost hard. grab it, right? You just grab it. Yeah. Or certainly just tap it barely to himself. Lane violation here on the Frogs. And that's on Ladee. And so now Rutherford's going to get another chance. 6 one to go. Grayer's going to check into the lineup now. Comes in for Deontay Smith. Those are just mental mistakes you can't yes. have down the stretch. Well, D, as we talked about, though, not a lot of game experience here at TCU. Just eligible earlier in the week. Rutherford's free throw is good there. The second opportunity. He'll check out, and back in will come Colin Velt. On offense, they'll probably go right back down to him. He's leading them in scoring tonight with 12 points, and he's done a nice job on the block for him. Irvine trying to steal one on the road here in the Big 12. Nemart and a foul on the reach. It's nice, nice patience by RJ. He came off that, and he probably could have rose up and shot a three, but it was nice patience, ripped through, trying to get to the get to the paint, was able to draw a foul. John Edgar whistled for the personal foul. That's his first. Team found number four on the Anteaters. Catch and shoot here for Grayer on the inbounds. Nice job by Bain to follow it twice. Tapped around here. Grayer trying to save it. Does so. And on the run now comes UC Irvine. And a foul on Desmond Payne on the reach. It's a right idea from Desmond coming down there to try to trap that because as soon as he turns his head, he doesn't see the weak side help coming. Just got part of the arm there as he reached in. Just the first on Desmond Bain, but does send Irvine to the line. Now with a one and one, it's going to be Edgar at the strike. So John Edgar to the free throw line. As a team, the Anteaters shoot nearly 80% from the free throw line, Colin. That'll win you a lot of games. Edgar knocks it that one. Most, most NBA teams shoot around that. Not a lot of college teams get that yep. high. Another look at it here. You can see it just gets tied up. So the, the, the difference is if you come from low and scoop it, uh -huh. you have a better chance of getting it off the ground as opposed to coming over the top. That's where you rake it across the arm almost every time. Edgar made them both. You'll know that name, John Edgar. His dad was a co-captain at Arizona. With Steve Kerr back in 85 and 86 averaged about 11 points a game there. Five and a half to go. Dennis. Well, D wants it. Double team, double team, double team. Backs in, spins in, jump hook short. Another rebound here for the Ant Eaters. It's good That's patience by Ladee getting the shot he wanted. Backed him down low. Just got to get it up over the front of that rim. I'm impressed. This is a well coached UC Irvine team, Colin. You can tell. I mean, you can see why they won 31 games last yep. year and upset K State in the NCAA tournament. They rebound well. They defend pretty well. There you go. Coming from below. Yep. He's able to steal it from behind. And then Dennis fell. And they got to call our test for the intention. He clearly wanted to foul him, but I, I can't really, I couldn't really tell here. We're going to see on the replay if he made a play on the ball. It's a tough call if he makes a play on the ball. We'll see here. Yeah, no, he just kind of wrapped him up, yep. didn't really make a play on the ball. If you come in like that and, and make a play on the ball and just chop the guy's wrist off, you know, it's tough to, it's really tough to uh, to call that an intentional foul. That's four on our test. Dennis in the free throw line. Edrick. See if the Frogs can capitalize here. Two shots in the ball. You can hear their head coach, Russell Turner. Telling Darren George he did exactly the way we teach him. Second free throw is good there from Edrick Dennis. Now the Frogs with possession of it. Irvine with a two-point advantage, 4.54 to go. It's going to be a big possession. The Frogs can knock down a 
a two or even a three here. It can be a five-point possession and really swing this game back in their favor here. Grayer, an experienced player, the transfer from George Mason, R.J. Nemhart. And Edric Dennis, another experienced frog on the floor. Desmond Payne from the elbow. That's his spot. Doesn't get the roll and a rebound here for Green. Yeah, they're, they're making a concerted effort to really try to get Desmond Bain the ball, but Worker's doing a really nice job of staying with him off all these screens. Penetrate, a nice move there. We've seen Worku a couple of times take it to the basket like that. I tell you, he's had a terrific second half here. He's got 12 points now in the second half alone. After getting shut out in the first half, he's taking this game over. And drawing the number one defensive assignment. Yes, out of 4-10 to go. Lead at four for the Anteaters. Grayer for three. That's an air ball and not the shot that Jamie Dixon wanted on the offense. Yeah, it was a little forced. Um, Desmond Bain picked up his dribble about the elbow and really wanted the D to duck in there. That just, that's going to come as they play together a little bit more. It's only the second time, or second game that the D has been in the, in the lineup. Now you feel like there's a shot clock winded down. They try to force this one to Green, slapped out of bound by Edward Dennis. You, you get the Anteaters with possession now. Out of the timeout, they've got just five of the shot clock. And the freshman Isaiah Lee will impact. This is danger time because if they score here, then you're starting, you're down, you know, six or seven. It's you start pressing a little bit when you start getting down to the three minute mark. Deep three, and that one is gonna not get there again. They struggle in those short time sequences. We've seen that a couple times. You can see that Russell Turner says that's not what we talked about. Right. And they haven't had to get to those situations no. a ton because they get the ball inside and get what they want early in the shot clock. Here's Ed Dennis on the move. Kevin Samuel back on the floor now. Four personal fouls for Kevin. By the way, Edric Dennis was telling his team, play with life now. Let's play with life. Them hearted blocked by Green. Yeah, Frogs want to stay aggressive here. Never hurts to score with the clock stop when you're down by four here. Another look at it here, Brad Green. Doesn't have to get far off the ground to get it with that left hand. Yeah, it's a tough angle for RJ to get the shot up on there. Our test is back into the lineup. He's got four personal fouls. For UC Irvine. Edric Dennis, Nimhart. Fires a jumper here. RJ, three-pointer. Big shot. RJ stepping off the screen right into a wide open three-pointer. When he's shooting the ball with confidence, we've seen this year that he can knock him down. He's been a really good bright spot offensively for the Frogs. One point ball game now. Crowd trying to get into it, trying to help him get a stop here. Green to our test to answer. Can't do it. And the rebound for Grayer. And then the amazing thing is Kevin Samuels in the first row after contesting the shot, and the Frogs still come up with a rebound somehow. Bain leaves. Grayer for three. Had a good look. May have rushed that one a bit, though. Felt trailing the play. It's foul. Frog's lucky that Velt didn't put that one in. Hit the back iron there. Grayer whistled for the personal foul. To the free throw line now will go Velt. Good free throw shooter as we mentioned. For Grayer, that was personal number three. I mean, I think it's pretty clear at this point that somebody besides Desmond Bain is going to have to step up and knock down a shot for the Frogs. So they're taking him out of every half-court offensive possession. If they want to run a play for RJ, because he's he's been hot here in the second half, he's knocked down a few shots. Got to get some scoring. Second free throw is good as well. 56-53, three-point ball game. Hard screen from Kevin Samuel misses the jumper. Had a good look at it. Green with another rebound. See, that was the same play, and I think he kind of wanted to pull up from three again because it was almost the exact same play. They tried to go under the screen. He took one extra dribble and still rose up. Just shot it a little too far there. Out of two minutes to go in this one. This game part of the MGM main event tournament. Rocks will be taking on Clemson as part of that in Las Vegas on Sunday night. Green off the glass. That's a uh, that's a tough shot. Is you're 12 feet away, you don't usually try to bank it in straight on. He's in double digits with a double double. And they say ball is tipped. Stays here with the frogs. Anna Eaters touch it last. They're going to 
to take a look at this one. Well, check this one, Will Gary Maxwell. You're under two minutes to play, so only 43 to go. Here's another look at it. You tell me, Colin. Who touches this one last? And well, I'm, I'm assuming you have to have conclusive evidence, right? Yes. Okay. So the call on the floor is off of the Anteaters. It was really close. Yeah. You can see that. I couldn't see which player it was for Anteaters. Got his hand in there on defense. I'm not sure anyone touched it though. After looking at it. I don't know if we have any other angles here. Here's another look at it. Let's see. See if the trajectory of the Let's ball see. changes too, you know? Boy, that's tough to tell. Even in slow-mo, it's tough to tell. Either, either way, the miscommunication from Edward Dennis Jr. and R.J. Nemhard there They've got to shore that up, especially crunch time. You can practice, you work on these situations down a couple of buckets with two minutes to go. Other situations, you're prepared for all of this. You know what you're going to run, you know right. what you want to run. And you've just got to come in here and you got to execute when it comes down to it. Gary Maxwell and Pat Driscoll, the two officials, taking a look at the replay here. If the Frogs don't, if they retain possession, they don't score here. Down five, they can still they can still play defense. They don't have to start fouling yet. They don't have to do that yet. One more time. I don't well, know. I if, think. Boy, oh my! That's, I don't know if really anyone tough. touched the ball. I don't know. It's tough. You're worried that the, the last person who could have touched it would have been R.J. Nimhart. Well, R.J., yeah, correct. Oh, they, well, they're going to leave it with the Frogs. Yeah, they probably, had the same, probably the same thing. If they had the same angle we had, that's just – it's too hard to tell. Frogs break, with it. Break for the Frogs there. See if they can drop a play to get a good shot for one of their shooters. Got a 143 to go. Edric Dennis. R.J. Nimhart. Yeah, R.J. has been go. hot all day long. And Edgar was just a hair late recovering out there and almost got into that passing lane by going for that pass instead of playing the man. Give up the wide open shot for R.J. Knocks it down. Three-pointer makes it a two-point game now. Work who? Velp. Again, you've got some experience on the floor. If you're Irvine, yeah, but a steal here, that's Desmond Bain. Just getting your hands active. RJ still hot. That one off the mark. On a three on two, I know you've made a couple of three pointers, though. You still, and as athletic as he is, and he can finish left handed, he's got to still keep going to the basket. Yep. And, and frankly, Desmond didn't need to give the ball up until somebody stops him here in the middle. 50 seconds left now. Frogs are down by two. Felt. Nice look to Edgar, who can't handle it. Let's see who touched it last. It's going to be TCU's ball, so a couple of turnovers here by Edgar. RJ looks like he might take a finger to the eye there, too. Oh, he was going to be wide open for a yep. layup, too. Yeah, just a little scrape on the eye there. That was a good look from Velp to find Edgar, just couldn't handle the pass. Under 40 seconds left now, two-point ball game. If you don't get a score here, you got to be prepared to foul. They look for the big fella, Samuel, who's fouled. That's probably not a bad foul by Green. That'll be his third, but Kevin Samuel continues to struggle from the free throw line. Here's another look at it. Well, the other part of that, too, the equation, too, is that Kevin Samuel's been on the bench for most of the game because yep. of foul trouble. So he's kind of coming in a little cold here. See if you can knock him down. He's just 4 of 12 on the year from the free throw line. First one. All right, now you gotta you gotta get your contingency ready on a on a make you foul. Uh, you, you can try to go for a couple steals. You got 30 seconds. You can try to get a couple steals first. Don't have to go for the foul immediately, especially with such a good free throw shooting team as the Anteaters are. Samuel missed them both. Long rebound. Our test. 
Here comes the double team. No foul. No foul. Don't foul them. They want a timeout. Do they get it? Yes. With 22.5. That was a good trap because if they don't call timeout here, now you're looking at your big guy still 15 feet away from getting across the line, and he's got three seconds to do it. Now, what's interesting here is when that sequence started, yep. there was more time on the game clock than on the shot clock. That's correct. But now they've taken the shot clock off with 22.5 to go. They didn't start it. Those two clocks started at the same time. Those should be simultaneous, and there should have been a, what was it, 30.8 was left, I think. I think Darren George may have caught that. Let's see if they take a look at this. Nope. I mean, it was pretty close, but. There you can see the head coach, Russell Turner. Two-point ball game right now. His Anteaters with the lead. The Frogs are going to have to find a free throw shooter who's not the best out here on the floor, and I'm sure they have all good ones out here. Let's yeah, it's see. tough at this point. Our test is a guy who doesn't get to the line in a Edgar, Edgar, Edgar's the worst at 78%. Everybody else is above that. That's going to win them a lot of basketball games. Yes. I mean, this is a team that shoots 80%. Nearly 80% from the free throw line as a team. Again, now Jerron Artest has yet to be to the free throw line this year. We need well, that's the one you that's who you definitely want to put on the line. Until he's two of two, though, tonight coming into this game. This is a guy who just doesn't get to the line very much. Uh, if you can get a steal here first and foremost, try to do that. And, and they've caught what we were talking about earlier. This is a clock issue. Because when this last possession started, there was more time correct, on the game clock than there was on the shot clock. Now, now they've added 21 seconds on the shot clock because it was about it was a point eight second yeah, differential. And, well, and the frogs are the beneficiaries here, but get an extra point five. Yeah. Or uh, excuse me, one point five, so point seven to add it up. And bounce here. Work who in the backcourt. Fouled by Dennis. One and one situation. Work who eight out of ten from the line coming into this game. And tonight two for two. So ten for twelve on the season. And a senior out there. And he's a senior and he's had a tremendous second half. He's yep. definitely the guy you want to have the ball. Austin Johnson comes in now for Rutherford. You know, Thinking back when uh, Jaden Ledee had the lane violation earlier in the game, too, Rutherford ended up knocking down that free throw. Yep. And that extra point could loom large here. Worku misses. Rebound off of UC Irvine. Jamie Dixon's going to take a timeout now with 20.6 left. That's the last one and one. UC Irvine's going to have a chance to do everything else will be two shots from here on out. And there's Worku, the senior, had a great opportunity to kind of not necessarily seal it, but had a chance there. Well, you got to, if you're a Frog fan, you got to hope that they don't look at that replay <laughs> because I think Jaden Ledee might have touched it with his fingertips there. I don't see the officials going over to the scorer's table. Nope. 20.6 left. 58-56 right now. UC Irvine with a two-point lead here. Schollmeyer Arena tonight. The two teams have met just one other time. That was back in 1988. Here comes the replay of that. Watch Jaden Ledee's right hand. Left hand. Well, he definitely touched that. He did a nice job. The first thing you're supposed to do when the ball goes out of bounds, yep. and you're not sure if what the official's going to call, point the other way. Absolutely. So he did a very nice job of selling that. Well, he's got five points and two boards here. You see Russell Turner, 10th year as a head coach. And you see Irv Hunt. See what Jamie Dixon's drawn up here. Frogs have one timeout remaining. And Eaters have two. RJ shot the ball so well here in the second half, you'd think that they would Still run 
Desmond is a, almost a decoy because they're still gonna they're still gonna think that Desmond's gonna get the shot, right? Because he's Big 12 all all first team or preseason and the best shooter on the team. Don't be surprised if they get something going here for RJ. M Hart's got it. Kind of work 101. Takes it all the way to the rim. Had it blocked. Rebound and a foul here with 12.2 to go. Edgar grabs that rebound. You know, I like I really like the play design though. Don't waste any time. You're down two. Get something going to the basket. Just a nice play by Johnson coming over from the weak side. Well, we've seen that uh, a couple, couple of times out of here. A couple times. He did it. Oh, that's a terrific block. Yep. Great anticipation for Johnson. So to the free throw line now goes Edgar. Edgar, 7 of 9 on the season coming into this ball game. Edgar's a guy that they count on another leader with this group. Hasn't missed from the line of this one until now. All right, on a make, uh, you, you have time to go get a layup if you can, but knowing that Johnson's there patrolling the lane on the weak side, it might be better for the Frogs if they go down three here to try to draw something up to get a uh, get a three-pointer. And you have a timeout left here still, yep, too. One timeout left. If Edgar makes it, he missed both. Rebound here for the Frogs. He's going to let him go. Coach Dixon's going to let him go here, try to get something going to the basket because you don't need a two. Yep. Three here for the lead. RJ got it. RJ got the wide open three, knocks it down. One-point game. And a quick timeout taken here by Russell Turner. RJ comes back after missing the lay-in to knock down that three-pointer and give TCU a one-point lead now with 3.3 to go. It's a career high in points for RJ with 20 tonight. He's really shot the ball well. Knocking down a clutch three here with 3.3 to go. Frog's got a high five real quick, but then you gotta you gotta draw up a defense now too and make sure you don't give up anything at the basket. They're gonna, that's plenty of time for them to advance the ball, and they, I think they have another timeout beyond this one. Yep. So if they want what they could do, the ball will be on the baseline down here. They could th make a baseball pass to around half court and call another timeout and then really draw up a play with, say, two and a half seconds left. How about the confidence of R.J. Nimhart on that three? He was not going to be denied that one. That's that, that's what I would do if I was, it was coach at UC Irvine. You have that extra timeout, yep. you can burn it. Try to get somebody open on a baseball pass around midcourt, immediate timeout. Tell the official, when I catch it, I'm immediately calling timeout. So they're blowing the whistle. You're going to have 2.8, 2.6, or something like that. Then you can draw it up from half court. That's the difference between NBA and college, obviously. Sure. NBA guys can advance it, and they do that because they want more dramatics at the end of the game, right? So here, it's a, it's a lot harder to get something moving going towards the basket in three seconds and to get a good shot off. They're going to add four tenths of a second onto the clock here. So the 3.7 should show here for the Anteaters. And I think that you, Russell Turner, just told the officials, I'm going to want a timeout I think at half the, court. I think that's the right move. You let them catch it. Anything back here, you don't need to guard back here up by... That's too close up. You can guard everything around midcourt. Now Jamie Dixon's going to take the timeout. He wanted to see what Irvine did there. How do they space the floor? Yep. So he takes the timeout. The two head coaches back to the board here. I think you can put two guys up here. Nice job, RJ. Setting his feet, stepping right into that shot. Nice high arcing shot. He's really done a nice job yes. shooting a high arcing shot. That flat shot used to be a little flatter than that. And how about credit for the screen, too? Great screen from Ladee. He's done. He's made, he's made that shot a couple of times tonight. Holding the follow through, just really nice. And getting back on defense, not ready to celebrate until they call timeout. Just watching what's going on. I like that, too. A lot, of, a lot of guys these days, you see, see turn around and start pumping up the crowd, things like that. And what if they throw the ball in right sure. past yeah. him for the layup? 59-58. Inbound's going to come from Velp. He'll be underneath that basket there. They're going to try to get it to half Try to get a banana it. catch too far. Let him nope. shoot it. And a timeout taken with 1.1 to work with. Worku was screaming timeout as he dribbled up the floor. Yep. That's a smart play, but you only left yourself 1.1. Yeah, that's is, not a lot. So the banana cut that he was taking to kind of do, start dribbling up the floor, Desmond Bain did a nice job of making him turn back to the middle. And that's actually a, a, a difficult 
because now you got two guys on each side of you trying to dig out from underneath you. You don't want to foul, obviously, but they I think they wasted a little extra time that they could have if they ran a baseball pass to get somebody. You got you got a bunch of big guys with really good hands that catch the ball in the post. You can get one of those guys at half court to catch it. All right, here's the impounds that you see. Desmond did a nice job of forcing it back to the middle. RJ obviously doesn't want to foul there. And you can see Worku was just screaming timeout as he's dribbling down the floor. 1.1 to go. Frogs with a one-point lead here. Irvine's giving them all they wanted. Big so three from R.J. Nemhart. So now you got your biggest ball tracker, Jaden Ledee, on the ball, out of bounds here, tracking the ball. Going to make it really difficult. Don't want him to get anything down here on the post because they can get a good shot up down there. Edgar to inbounds. 1.1. Throws it up. Tapped around. Loose. Nimhart grabs it. And that'll do it. Great job by Kevin Samuel to get in front and make a pass. If it's going to go into him, make it go over top of him. It's really difficult to throw it into the post over 6'10". Kevin Samuel, he gets his hands on the deflection. Frogs win by one. Frogs are going to improve to 4-0 and oh on the season as Jamie Dixon shakes the hand of Russell Turner, who gave him everything they wanted here tonight, the Anteaters. They're going to have a successful run in the Big West this year. But tonight, R.J. Nimhard was the hero for TCU. 59-58 here tonight. What a way for Jamie Dixon to get his 400th career win. Gets it here tonight <laughs> on a three-pointer by R.J. Nimhard late that secures it for TCU. Nimhard, as you mentioned, finishes with 20 points here tonight. R.J. with a new career high and fitting that he got to touch it last here for TCU on that three to win it. Yeah, the Frogs are sunk without his offense here in the second half. Just like Work, who was scoring for the Anteaters in the second half, Nimhard really carried the Frogs here. Yeah, the Frogs uh, come overcome a rebounding deficit here as Irvine controlled the glass. Russell Turner's team played with a fiery attitude, much like the head coach. But in the end, the Frogs fought and scrapped and clawed their way to the one-point victory here tonight over the Anteaters out of UC Irvine. It was R.J. Nimhard with a three-pointer here late. TCU wins it 59-58 in Fort Worth tonight over UC Irvine. Due to the length of the previous program, we now join the following program.